Friday, May 5th. Okay, so we have the moon in Aries all day. Of course, we got downloaded with this new energy, this new passion, this new excitement, this new desire here last evening when, of course, the moon shifted into Aries energy. We had a little bit of a positive interaction, an intense one, if I do say so myself, with Pluto. And then we met up with Mars, of course, the god of war ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires in his rulership in this Aries energy. And of course, that was the green light go ahead that we are now being given to take action and make moves to jump into new chapters to initiate something new, which of course we are going to continue to pursue throughout this week with that new moon in Taurus. So there's already a pep in our step. We are very straightforward. We're very bold. We are action oriented in this Aries energy because we've ripped the rear view mirror off. We have no want, need, or desire to look back. We are tunnel vision on the path ahead. We want to start fresh. We want to jump into something new. We want to move on. We want to jump just see a little bit of change, a little bit of transformation in our physical realms. And so the energy levels, the attitude, the mood, if you will, is kind of intense. And so, you know, if you're using inspiration, motivation, and excitement to kind of fuel your inner fire, then you're going to be hopped up on those juices. And if you're using anger and frustration and agitation to fuel the fire to make the change, then you're going to be all hopped up on those juices. Either way, we are feeling some ants in our pants. Those ants can be great motivators or they can just bite your ass until it's sore and agitated. Uh, whichever way we're kind of, you know, using the energies right now, we are definitely on to something new. Now, the downside here is, of course, we don't really want to act on impulse. We have to be very careful with the actions and the energies that we're actually kind of using at this time. We don't want to act on anything new. We have to think very carefully, very kind of methodically and systematically with what it is that we want to pursue. We're not out there just taking action willy nilly. A lot of this can lead to impatience. It can lead to, you know, these urges that we just can't satisfy. And because Mars and this Aries energy is the, the toddler, the tantrum thrower of the Zodiac, we may find ourselves get heavy and heated and then reset in less than 60 seconds. So pay attention to your own energy management. Be aware of that so that you're not projecting, you know, a lot of that not so nice energy onto other people, but also be aware that other people need to be aware of themselves too. And most people aren't unless they're doing the work, which means that you might be the target of some not so nice energy being projected onto you. We do not want to react out of ego. We want to respond from our observer higher self. Pay attention to the energy exchange that is currently going on in your current relationships. Okay, so there are eight different aspects taking place here today. Seven of them are going to involve the moon. The moon in this Aries energy going to kick things off with a very positive interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, work, pleasure, and money in her rulership in this Taurus energy. I love this because this is like a no bullshit attitude. So wherever it is that you've been kind of like back and forth and on the fence with, oh, I don't really, you know, enjoy this interaction with this person anymore, but I don't want to get rid of them. I don't want to be the bad guy. I don't know how to, you know, cut people off. I don't know how to create space and distance and relationship dynamics in order to free me up in order to do what I need to do. This back and forth with people and relationship dynamics, this back and forth and being on the fence with, oh, should I try something new or should I continue to do the same old, same old? There's no limbo here, okay? The moon in Aries is cutthroat. We're straightforward, no bullshit attitude. And especially where Venus is concerned, we're not messing around with our heart space. We're not trying to talk ourselves out of changes and transformations that we know that we need to make. We don't mind being the bad guy, the villain in somebody else's story if it means that we're showing up as the hero in our own. So there's definitely going to be a dramatic shift in our mood, in our attitude, in our energy, especially where our happiness, our joy, our safety, security is concerned. We are not going to spend too much time weighing the pros and cons of that heart space because as far as I'm concerned, we know what we have to do. We've just been hesitating to do it, resisting to make those changes. The moon and Aries, we're not messing around. 
cut the cords, detach, flip the script, declare your thoughts, emotions, affections, declare what it is that you want, you need. Let's move on. Very much the mood, the attitude of the day. The moon is going to semi-square Uranus though. Uranus is the great awakener. He likes to shake us up, disrupt us to kind of open up our mind to doing things differently, seeing, you know, just new opportunities that we haven't considered as of yet. Because this is a semi-square, there is tension and conflict here. We're not going to gain as much clarity as we would like or insights as we, as we would like. We're not going to be illuminated to the new as much as we are going to be frustrated, maybe even overly anxious to get the party started. So this is kind of like a, we're being downloaded with all this energy. We have an intensity rising within us, but we still don't know exactly the action to take. And so instead of kind of gaining the clarity, we're sitting in this frustrated state of confusion and we're allowing the restlessness, the ants in our pants to get the better of us. Again, the central nervous system definitely affected with Uranian energy because it's like a lightning bolt to our central nervous systems. And with the ants in our pants just biting away, either trying to motivate us to take action and make moves or to, you know, get the party started in different ways, we're growing in frustration and agitation of not seeing clearly the first step to the path, to this plan, to the strategy that we need to take. Now, all is not lost. We're not going to sit in that funky energy for very long because the sun in Taurus energy is going to make a positive interaction with the North Node in Aries energy. So the sun in Taurus is going to bring us back down to this present moment, bring us back down to Earth, stabilize us, if you will, in order for us to objectively see, again, removing ourselves from the egoic emotional urgency and reaction in order to act as the observer and explore different options that we have to move forward. So, okay, we might not have a clear path, a clear plan as of yet, but at least when we stabilize in our energy and we don't like lose our shit, so to speak, and we don't lose ourselves into anxiety and we don't let those ants bite our butts, uh, we're able to step back and actually use logic and practicality, like matter of factly, to take a good look at the lay of the land what our options actually are. That North Node is presenting us with options and opportunities to move forward. We just have to be centered, be present, be in our physical form, aligned mind, body, and soul in order to make an informed decision. And the Sun interacting with the North Node is definitely going to present that particular awareness and that particular opportunity. The moon in this Aries energy, then going to semi-square Jupiter. Jupiter, of course, planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings in this Taurus energy. And just like we just interacted with Uranus in this Taurus energy, this interaction with Jupiter isn't going to feel so good either. Why is that, you may ask? Well, because Uranus and Jupiter are in Taurus energy. It's a fixed Earth sign. We need to go low and slow and steady paced in order to logically and practically take action and make moves according to a systematic, methodical path and plan that we have given a lot of thought to. The moon in Aries doesn't care about that. We just want to do something. We just want to act out. We just want to make moves. We just want to do something. But that restlessness, that anxiousness, that immaturity is definitely going to lead to some fumbles if we're not careful. Jupiter is showing us where it is that we have to pump the brakes. Okay. If we do want to grow, if we do want to evolve, if we do want to expand in our physical realms to new levels of happiness and joy and wealth and prosperity, we better have a plan. This isn't something that you just act willy nilly upon. You got to get your mind right. You got to stay in alignment. The moon in Aries just has too much pent up energy. And so we're not thinking clearly. And therefore, the universe is going to pump the brakes. It may manifest as frustration because, again, emotionally speaking, we want to charge ahead. But we're not doing things just, you know, flying by the seat of our pants. And so we are going to get a little bit of a uh, you know, pump the brakes type of feel from the universe. Because if we go ahead, act out, just act for the sake of acting without having a plan and a strategy put to place, 
we're going to make a mess out of things and we're going to have to clean that mess up before we're going to be able to pursue the opportunities that are already kind of written in stone for us to pursue. We just got to get through this new moon in Taurus. So again, the ants in our pants definitely putting us in situations to kind of make a mess out of things if we're not careful. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Pluto, the great transform himself retrograde in this Aquarius energy. This is kind of like the moment where we're realizing, okay, I get it. We got to, we got to get strong. We got to get anchored in, in our inner realm, right? Emotionally speaking, we have to cultivate this warrior type of spirit. We have to cultivate this inspiration and this excitement. And Pluto is showing us where in our inner realm, we have to boss up into this new power, into this new level of control and authority over our energy. Again, we're about to be moving into this first testing period of this creator energy that we all have available to us. We're gonna be able to test out these abilities, but we gotta get our inner realm right. If you're just bouncing around and just, you know, responding to the chaotic energy, you're not in a position to have power and control as a creator. You need to boss up. You need to have energy management. And the moon interacting with Pluto is definitely going to put us in check, show us where it is that we need to exercise more power and control over our energy, over our emotions, before we're going to be gifted with the opportunity to actually put those powers to use. The moon in Aries energy, going to come up to bump into team up with the North Node in Aries energy, which means we're sitting across from directly opposing the South Node in Libra energy. So first of all, we have to understand that the North Node in Aries energy is trying to get us on the right path to reach our soul's mission, our soul's potential. This is reminding us that this is a solo quest. It's an independent venture. We have to have a little bit more time to ourselves to embrace who it is that we now are, get in touch with our authenticity, get in touch with our individuality so that we can stand very firmly on our own two feet, knowing who it is that we are, what it is that we want, what it is that we need to do, what it is that we need to pursue without the influence of other people around us. So here's the thing, the opposition to the South node in Libra energy is going to have us triggered in such a way that we're going to be presented with a choice point. We are going to be tempted to fall back into old patterns, old behaviors, especially where codependency is concerned. We're connecting, intertwining, overly attaching ourselves to other people is concerned, allowing other people's thoughts, ideas, opinions to really influence us at this particular point. We have to avoid this at all costs. The South Node in Libra is where we're coming from. The lessons that we just learned the hard way through eclipse season, now we have to actually act upon it here in the physical realm to prove that we're walking the walk, we're talking the talk, that we actually learned our lesson. So the want, need, and desire, because it's old, tried, tested, true, comfortable, and familiar to fall back on, you know, going and asking your friend what they think about your new idea or leaning in back onto your romantic partner and allowing their two cents to totally screw with your head. We have to close the door on that. The more we pour into ourselves, the more we build in knowing thyself, the more we are not going to need the two cents from, you know, the people, the world around us. This is a time where we have to break away from collaborating, if that's what you want to call it, with other people when realistically what you're doing is you're looking outside of yourself for validation. And what happens is, is that because they don't have the same level of awareness as you, because they haven't done the amount of work as you, because they don't look at the world through the same lens as you, they're not going to see the magic, the power that your current goals, visions, and dreams hold, and they're going to try and talk you out of it, okay? We have to squash this. Be very aware, very cognizant of this energy as it manifests. Do not fall back into the old. Instead, test yourself, pressurize yourself to choose something new. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with the sun. And I love this, especially following that interaction with the nodes of the moon, because the sun and the moon, when they come together, there's a new emotional awareness. There's a new aha moment. 
we're finally realizing what it is that we want, we need, we desire, what we're being called to do, what we're being called to pursue. The moon in Aries is hot to trot. We're ready to go. Just give us the green light. Go ahead. We're ready to take action. We're ready to make moves. We are building up in this warrior spirit. We are bold. We're brave. We're courageous. We're ready to go. The sun, however, shining a bright light in Taurus energy, although we truly appreciate that shift in mood and attitude, that you know, elevated amount of inspiration and motivation from the moon being in Aries energy. We need to take it slow. If you want something done right, you have to keep your mind about you. So yes, although, you know, many of us were born, weren't born, I should say, with patience or were born with a certain level of patience that just isn't cutting it here in the physical realm, especially through Taurus season, we are going to have a little bit of an aha moment that if we are truly passionate, excited, inspired, and if we truly desire the kind of outcome, the kind of you know vision that we're currently working towards, then we have to pump the brakes and we have to do this right. And we have to get a grip over ourselves and we have to calm our inner round down to a state where we are hyper-focused on what needs to be done in a calculated, methodical way so that we are building, creating, giving birth to something that is so solid, so strong, that it's actually going to support us in the long term of seeing this particular goal and vision through. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in this Aries energy making a positive interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, in this Pisces energy. So lucky for us, this is a positive interaction. If it wasn't, then we're going to get knocked off of our high horse and just absolutely reality checked in a way that is going to stun us for a couple of days. But lucky for us, this is a positive interaction. So what does this mean? Especially coming out of that earlier interaction of the sun and the moon coming together and us kind of getting ourselves into check here. Um, Saturn is coming in and saying, okay, you're showing a good level of maturity. You are absolutely in the right zone of cultivating this inner fire, this inner spark. You are mature enough to now see due to the tough love lessons that you previously learned where it is that you got to slow your ass down, right? We cannot act on impulse. We cannot create something long-term, something strong, something beautiful off of immediate impulse and so Saturn is here to say okay you got the right mood you got the right attitude you're keeping yourself in check now let's get back to the bare basics what do we have to build first and foremost well that answer is pretty easy discipline discipline to keep ourselves in check secondary to that willpower again how excited how inspired how passionate how angered are you to actually make a change and C, or thirdly to that, where it is that there's a shift in belief system, because again, Saturn's in this Pisces energy, really kind of collapsing and deconstructing the old false set of beliefs that are very limiting, very restricting due to the pain and trauma that we've experienced in the past. We're overriding that system and the moon in Aries energy is the energy to do it. So we're kind of being kind of bossed up in a beautiful way. We're given this vote of confidence by the Lord of Karma himself that guess what? As long as you keep your energy in check, you're going to be able to piece this new chapter together to start building something new, building towards something beautiful, as long as you don't let those ants in your pants derail you from the path, the plan, the strategy. 